Fun fact, my very first studio background in my very first studio was a black background and I chose it because I thought it was going to be the easiest to work with. I was very wrong. It's really hard to get a pure black background seamlessly black unless you know what you're doing. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And in this video, I'm gonna show you what I wish I knew all those years ago, how to make this go really deep black. And at the same time, because I've got a white wall in my studio, I'll show you how to make a white wall actually come out white, really white. So I've got plenty to go through, but whilst I'm setting everything up, you should click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. That's the light set, let's get a model in, let's get shooting. To help me out today, I've got the amazing Chloe. Chloe's gonna be the model for this photo session and we're gonna start with a black background because in theory, that should be the easiest to do. I've got a black background, I've got a flash. Surely it's as simple as that. Well, there are a few things we want to do and the first thing I want to do is actually turn my flash transmitter off and take a picture at my camera settings without any flash firing. So my camera settings for this are 1 250th of a second, which is the flash sync speed for my OM system, OM1 camera, f5.6 for a reasonable depth of field, ISO 200, and when I take a picture without any flash firing, no flash, no picture. And that is absolutely important because that is gonna show me the darkest black I can make this background actually go. So I've turned my flash transmitter back on. I'm at half power to get the exposure right on Chloe. Let's just take a picture with this wonderful black background. Here we go, quick little test photo. That background, well, it's not actually black. I mean, it's nearly black, but it's not really deep black. So why didn't this work? Well, let's have a little meter reading here. We know this is f5.6, but what's the meter reading on the back here? The background, is meter reading at f4. So it's only underexposing the dark background by one stop. And you might think, well, that's enough. Surely it's gonna go black. But black isn't actually black. Black is just the absence of light. And even black backgrounds have a little bit of brightness to them. So we need to make that background go even darker. And I'm gonna do that in an interesting way. As you can see, I've moved the light much closer to Chloe, and you might think that's a bit of a weird thing to do because it's gonna affect the balance between Chloe and the background. But in this case, it's gonna be a positive thing. So Chloe still reads f5.6. Round the back, I'm now getting f2. So we've gone from one stop difference between the light on Chloe and the light on the background to three stops different in light. That basically means Chloe is still gonna be the same exposure, but now that background is gonna be three stops underexposed. It's gonna go really deep black. However, the light on Chloe has changed. So now it's much more directional than it was before. And we're gonna use that to our advantage. What I'm gonna do is actually move the light around Chloe so it's coming in from behind. And this is gonna do a couple of things. The first thing as far as our black background is concerned, well, now the light is pointing away from the background. It's gonna be, as deep a black as you can possibly imagine, but it's also not pointing at Chloe's face. And you might think this is a bit of a strange thing, but stick with me, it will get better, I promise. And I can even move it further around like this. So it comes in from the other side of Chloe and gives us a hair light. Now what I am getting with this is a little bit of light on Chloe's face. So where is the light on the right hand side as we look at this photo coming from? And the answer is, this wall here. So I'm getting a bit of light bouncing off of this wall and I'm gonna fix it by adding a grid. A grid is just a device that allows us to direct the light. So the light's gonna go forward and if I look at the wall closest to Chloe and look back at my softbox, I can't really see the surface of the softbox. It's being blocked by the grid. Okay, Chloe, here we go, quick little test photo. So now we still have the light on the left-hand side of the picture, but the right-hand side is almost completely in darkness. And that's something we should probably fix. So I've got a, another light. This is actually a slightly less powerful one. This is the Flashpoint 
Evolve 200, but it's more than up for the job, and it's in a smaller softbox. None of that really matters. It's got the grid on, which really does matter, because this is going to push light in the opposite direction and fill in some of those shadows with light. Now, let's see if it works. Here we go. And it does, but you'll notice this picture is a little bit dark, a little bit underexposed, and that's on purpose, because I've got one more light to add in to really make this effect stand out. This is the Flashpoint AK R21 projector. Inside of that is a gobo, and all that does is to project a pattern onto, well in this case, Chloe. Now you have to project light onto shadow, otherwise you won't see it. So having our black background and lots of shadows on Chloe should make this the perfect opportunity to really get creative with the AKR21. But to really make these more dramatic, I'm gonna change one thing. I'm gonna take away the color. This really high contrast scene lends itself to black and white. So that's what we're gonna do. So Chloe, if you're ready, I'm ready. let's take a few photos like this. Here we go. The Flashpoint projector is attached to the Flashpoint Evolve 200, and I'm using that because it has a very dim modeling lamp. It's enough to get me in focus with the gobo, but Chloe can't really move too much, otherwise she will fall out of the light. So I've got rid of the black background and replaced it with a white background, but the more astute of you will notice actually I've just put the black background over here. That's going to come in really handy to block a bit of light bouncing off the wall, but we'll get to that because white backgrounds. This is easy. I literally have a white wall to work against. I've put the light where it worked well with the black background, so this should be perfect, shouldn't it? Let's take a photo here, see how it goes. Here we go, Chloe. Lovely light on Chloe and a perfectly white, oh, no, it's not, is it? It's gray. You see, the thing is, what worked for the last setup with a black background is the exact opposite of what you need to do for a white background with one flash. Because it might well be f5.6 here, but we remember from before, it was three stops lower when we meet it on the background. So the problem with the black background is the solution for the white background. I'm gonna put this light way back over here and a lot higher. Because I've moved the flash, I need to re-meter it just to make sure we get the right amount of light. I'm aiming for f5.6. You don't need a flash meter, it's not essential. You could do this by trial and error, but a flash meter really makes it more accurate and quicker. So I've got the correct exposure on Chloe. Let's take a test photo like this, here we go. And now that white background is, well, a little bit whiter than it was before, but it's not that pure white that I was after. In fact, it's not as white as the wall looks to my eye. So the solution is, Chloe, can you go and stand against the wall? If Chloe stands on the wall and I get the exposure right on Chloe, that's as white and bright as the wall can be. And yet somehow that's still not the look I'm going for because I want that pure white without any shadows. And for that, we're gonna need one more light. To make any background go really white, you have to light it. Where black is an absence of light, white is the, the opposite, way too much light. But how much can you get away with? Now, you could do this by trial and error, but this is where a flash meter really excels because I'm gonna meter, not the wall, but the back of Chloe's head. So I've got this light set to 1 8th power. It's giving me f5.6. That matches my camera setting and is the maximum power I can push out of that light before we start to lose contrast on the picture. Out of interest, because someone's going to ask, f18 back here. So on the background, it is around about three and a bit stops brighter. That really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how bright the background is, it's how reflective it is. So let's take a picture like this and see what we get. There's no light in front of Chloe. So this is gonna give us not a silhouette because we're in a small studio where light bounces around off the walls and the ceiling, but it's as dark on Chloe as I can get in the space I have. I could use the soft light that we had before to light Chloe and fill in those shadows, but there's a reason I wanted those really deep dark shadows. We have our pure white background, but now to make this more graphic, I'm gonna use the projector again, and this time I'm gonna use just the round projector gobo. That's gonna slide in here. I'm just gonna project a circle of light onto Chloe's face. 
just like that. Let's see how this looks. Here we go. And the projector creates a very graphic image. So we have that really pure white background. And then we use the little projector just to put a strip of light across Chloe's face. So I think we should take a few photos like this. Chloe, are you ready? ready. Okay, here we go. Different gobos give different looks and I'm going to try a few different ones as I go through this lighting setup. I'll leave links to all of the gear I'm using in this video, including the projector and the gobos, in the video description below. There are three words I've deliberately avoided using in this video because I wanted to keep it more practical than technical, but someone's going to put them in the comments. And if you did, you're absolutely right. This whole technique relied on something called the inverse square law, which is actually, that's four words, but it doesn't really matter. What's important is putting the lights in the best position for the space you have. And if you've got more space than I've got, you've definitely got more choices. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And of course, if you haven't already done so, why haven't you clicked on that subscribe button? Click on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.